You know, last week we actually looked into the hallmarks of a worthy walk. Yogyamaya Vileyullahuri Jeevadatthin Lelachanangal. We looked at some of them. And Friday morning, I was actually talking with the people who gathered there about the transformation that we should be displaying since we have become children of God. Amen. Now before I get into the message today, as a way of you know, getting the message introduced to you. Just listen here. We were in darkness and we were brought into the kingdom of light. Amen. And we always speak about day and night. We were in the night. The Lord brought us to the day. If that is true, then our life should speak it. Amen. If you are in darkness now, you are brought to light. Then your life must now show it. That's a word that is called transformation. We need to be becoming like Christ. Just think about this for a moment. That, let's say, a homeless person, a street guy. You know, he, he stings from 10 feet away. He's not had a, a shower in days. He's in rags. Look really bad. Not much belongings. And one day a king comes to him. And asks him a question. Are you ready for a new life? Would you like to have a new life? He said, yes, I'm ready. So he was taken to the palace. You know, probably gave him a haircut. Clipped his nails. Showered. New clothing. Maybe spray. New shoes. Now he looks like a gentleman. But needed to understand something. There is something that he must maintain. There is something that he should maintain. There is a responsibility on his side. You are in the palace, sure. A new life is given to you. But it's time that you need to actually put away that old rags. Don't be going looking in the dumpster and see, oh, there's anything my old clothes still here. Don't be going picking that up. Live in the newness of life. Amen. You must maintain that. See, you need to maintain your cleanliness, your personal hygiene. You need to act like a gentleman. Walk around gentlemen. Talk to gentlemen. Think like a gentleman. Amen. Hallelujah. Namlaim irittil nengod kondu andirikya. Putran ne rajitil velichitil ne ayiti kondu andirikya. Namlodu ipa parishidal na varay. Now you need to have a total change the way you think about yourself. And I told you this morning that Satan attacks our mind. He plays with our minds. He tells you you're not born again. He tells you you're not changed. He tells you are still the same old, same old. He plays with your mind. Amen. That's when we need to go back to God's word. We need to understand the principles are hidden in God's word. Hallelujah. See, namalk rubandaram varun illengil yatra gundarathuila. It is so sad. You know, there are some people, you ask them, how long have you been a Christian? 30 years. He has actually no spirituality of a three-day-old. 
30 years of Christianity you brag about. But life is so different. There's no transformation. We need to be becoming like Christ every day. Oro dosom kadiyum bol. Namlu kartavne pole ay tirandu vallade avishama. It's a journey. It's a journey that we must take very seriously. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And oh, you, you have to tell yourself, I'm not a homeless person anymore. I'm not in the gutter anymore. God has given me a new walk. I am in the kingdom of light. I am somebody. I'm blood bought. I'm washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a child of God. I can call him Abba Father. He is my father. I am his child. There are angels to assist me. You have to start telling yourself. I need to start acting like the new man that I have become. Positionally, I'm a saint. Amen. Positionally, I'm a saint. Let's start living like a saint. Hallelujah. See, God loves it when he sees his children actually moving into that direction. So, this is, this is again, uh, I want to turn your attention to Ephesians chapter 4. So, we are studying Sunday school also. We are studying the book of Ephesians. You know, that whole chapter is very interesting chapter. You know, from verse 19 onwards, actually, I'm, I'm, I'll be looking at the whole entire chapter. But I spoke something from verse 8, verse 19 onwards. It's very interesting. Verse uh, 21, it says, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of the of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness and of truth. <laughs> Devan Dubamaya, Sistik of the Pudia Manishan and Diram, Tarichigolayanam. See, if you are born again, we all talk about being born again. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, and Jesus said, You must be, you must be born again. Winning the Nikram, Nicodemus say, Winning any telling the Nietilla, you will never inherit the kingdom. Now, Let's say a child is born to you. What do you expect? You expect to see this child grow. Yes or no? Yes. Otherwise, when you go for checkup, the doctor will ask you, What have you been feeding this kid? Are you not feeding this kid? See, if you're born and new, then God expects us to grow. Can I hear an amen to that? Ningle Janichi to Nangal Walaranam. Amen. If you're born into God's kingdom, you should grow into maturity. You should become like Christ. You should transform. So the title that I gave is actually Transformation into Christ likeness. Christus Adrashitle Kula Uru Ruvandaram. That's our desire. Young people, adults, all listening to you this morning, that should be a desire of every born again child of God. I want to be like Christ in every area of my life. Hallelujah. So God desires that you should grow after your birth. You know, there's something else. I want to, I want to show your attention to, to 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. 
Can someone read that for me? First John chapter 2, 12 to 14. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Amen. You know, I always like this portion of scripture. And I want you to remember this. When God hears this, when God hears this, you know, I want to read this to you uh, in another translation. He says, I write to you, my children. Okay, this is talking about children. Because your sins are forgiven. And for the sake of Christ, I write to you, fathers, because you know him who has existed from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you have defeated the evil one. Amen. So just, just pay attention to these things. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who has existed from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong. The word of God lives in you, and you have defeated the evil one. Amen. This is a picture of a church. This is a picture of a church in transformation. Out of the eleven, the young ones, young men, you know, the little ones, children, young people, fathers, everyone is growing. Hallelujah. Amen. Children, your sins are forgiven. Kuningle Ningle and the Amathin, the Pavang and the Rikia, Pavang and Moji Sirikia, Pirak and Maran and the Varjikine, to the fathers. Yes, you know him who has existed from the beginning. So the fathers here have a good understanding about the one who is from the beginning. They know God. Fathers have a good understanding about God. Again, you would see, because you know him who has existed from the beginning. And look at what he said about the young people here. You have defeated the evil one. Amen. And, the, and, and, and again, you would see young people because you are strong. The word of God lives in you. And you have defeated the evil. What a beautiful picture of young people. Amen. Look at the picture of young people here. You are strong. Amen. Nanglara. Shaktara. Amen. Then God lives in you. Nanglara was sick in under. They were sick in under. Then you have defeated the evil one. Pishadine Ningla. Jay Chirikia. Amen. You have left those milk bottles. Now you are in the battlefield. Amen. You are in the battlefield. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. You are strong. You are in the battlefield. From the nursery to the battlefield. Hallelujah. We are moving from the nursery. From baby food. Into solid food. Into the battlefield. Equipped with everything. That a soldier needs to stand firm. Amen. Amen. And I, you know, as John was writing this, I believe God was delighted. God was so delighted. You know, God also gives people, you know, church, apostles, teachers, prophets, you name it, fivefold ministry is given. To, what is the purpose of it? Equip the church. Bring the church into maturity. Amen. We have elders. We have Sunday school teachers. We are pastors. God has blessed us with so many people who can teach God's word to you. What's the purpose of all? Make you strong. Make you strong. You know, Paul says that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. 
You know, in chapter 4, he says that Christ himself taught you. So who is the teacher here? In chapter 4, book of Ephesians, Jesus Christ himself is your teacher. Amen. Amen. And you know Christ. You know, children, listen here. Pastor will probably will be here a few more times, a few more years. But I want to tell you something. You need to become like Christ. Amen. Maybe you should put this, print this and put it on your mirror. Say, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to be like Christ. Amen. I want to be like, you know, I, I can just... I can Stand up here and pick up a nice story from an Old Testament. You know, Old Testament, I like Old Testament. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good. There's a lot of, it's a, it's a New Testament hidden. Is what Old Testament is all about. But you don't need to hear something else tickling your ears. You need to hear the solid things. You should be becoming like Christ every day. Not like the world. You should resemble like Christ. I'm not talking to young people alone here. I'm talking to adults here. Adults here. Talk about four decades of Christianity. Two decades of Christian life. A decade of walk with Christ. What have you become? You know, you shouldn't be. It's time to move on. It's time to be strengthened. It's time to get into the battlefield. It's time for transformation. Hallelujah. Transformation into Christ likeness. Hallelujah. And the question that we, we need to be asking is actually, maybe you all need to we all need to be doing a self-diagnosis. Am I really growing? Am I transforming? See, in, in Christian circle, there's a there's a a usage, a term called, you know, character transformation. Everybody talk about character transformation. What does that really mean? It simply means becoming like my Lord. You becoming like your Lord. Kartavne pole? Agano. It's not becoming a great citizen. Yes, you will become a great citizen. But the most important thing is becoming like your Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's look at verses 14 through 16. Chapter 4, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Now this is this is this is very important truth. I know it's not very exciting to listen to, but this is important. Okay, now listen. I'll, I'll read the New Living Translation. He says that there will be no longer immature like children. Then, then, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown by every wind and of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, more like Christ who is the head of his body, the church, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. What a beautiful picture about a church that is in the process of transformation. Pay attention to some of these words. Immature. Tossed, babies, blown, influence. Now we just need to take the opposite of it. 
We are not called so that every wind of doctrine take you this way. Next week you are on this way. No, your, your life is not a seesaw. So pay attention, you know what, the verses 14 to 16. You would see an overarching quest for stability will be evident. And the one or is still the Q and you la pregada maya or agraham or annuationam yalagali namaka kanangari. I want to be strong. I don't want to be a kid anymore. I don't want to be an infant anymore. I don't want to be drinking milk anymore. There's I want to be a stable Christian creating me a steadfast spirit. A steadfast spirit. I want to be stable. I want to be strong. In every area. See what's the point? Let's say you come to church. You're a great singer, worshipper here. At home, if you're a failure. Let's say if I'm a preacher here, I'm a pastor here. I stand behind, you only see me here. If I'm a failure at home in my relationship with my wife. And my children, it's not no use. In your workplace, you don't get along with people. It's a bad name to Christ. Some people say, I don't want to work with her. I don't want to work with that guy. Give me somebody else. And you call yourself a Christian? Why is that you don't get along? Why are you not a team player? If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, you should be stable in every area of your life. I know you want to say amen to that. But I say amen. Stable in every way. No more a kid. No more being influenced by anything that sounds like truth. No. Hallelujah. You know, message translation goes this way. No prolonged infancies among us. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods. Small children who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up. To know the whole truth. And tell it in love. Like Christ in everything. We take lead from Christ. Who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. That's a church. Hallelujah. No more infants in the woods. Praise God. It's time to grow. It's time to move into maturity. Look at the people here. You know, you could actually do a self-analysis, self-diagnosis. Okay? Ask yourself, is there a desire in, in my life to be a stable person? Stable in every area? Lord, I want to be a good wife. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good brother. I want to be a good citizen. I want to be a good son-in-law. I want to be a good daughter-in-law. Hello? Some people are on fire. But the mother-in-law says, I don't believe it. They won't get along. See, the gospel truth should come to that area of our life. Gospel truth should work in your life as you work with people in the workplace. It should go to your college. I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about my children. I'm talking about everyone here. All of us together. Gospel must penetrate, transform every area of our life. Can you hear an amen? Hallelujah. You would see this. An overarching desire that you have to be stable. To be strong. So look at verse 14. Where very specifically it is about doctrine. It is doctrinal stability. Just, just simply read verse 14 only. Mm. 
Amen. So now here you would see Paul is really desiring. He's speaking about a community. A community in transformation. They are tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine that really comes. They know what the scripture says. Just knowing why you believe what you believe. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, this is very important. Young people, this is important. Adults, this is important. When you go to college campuses, these are what people are going to ask you. So you call yourself a Christian. Do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. Why you believe in God? Because my parents believe in God. Why your parents believe in God? Because their parents believed in God. And he probably would say, there's something wrong with all of you. I'm just giving an example to think about. You should have a reason. When you stay away from certain activities and friends would come and ask you, hey, why don't you join us? And you would say, oh man, I'm this part of this funny Indian church, you know, near that place. Hey, these fellows don't do that kind of stuff, so I can't join. That's not a reason. Your reason comes from God's word. Amen. And you know why you believe what you believe. Why you stay away from certain things. Because you know that you are created for newness. Hallelujah. You are created to make a difference in the world. You are created to look like your master. So that you be, you be worthy of that name. Doctrinally stable. How do you get doctrinally stable? You know this book. You know this book. You read this book. You meditate this book. You listen to the preaching. You listen to teaching. And you bless. Apart from that, you spend time reading this book and you know the word. See, I always tell you this. You don't go learn counterfeit notes every time. Magnifying glass which I'm trying to figure out, man. How, how does this counterfeit look? No, you only need to know the right one. You only know the right one. When you know the right one thoroughly, any time a counterfeit comes along your way, you know it doesn't belong here. It doesn't belong here. I don't need to buy this stuff here anymore. I don't need to listen to these things anymore here. It doesn't fit the scripture. Amen. See, even if I come and tell you next week, oh, yesterday I had a dream, and this is what the Holy Spirit told me. And when you read the scripture, you understand that's exactly the opposite of what the Holy Spirit said. I could be a charismatic preacher, but if what I say doesn't jive with God's word, then you better not believe it. Paulus wanted in younger than a sorgatil nor do than born in one nature. He didn't ever I present that don't believe it. Paul says, I said this to you today, and two weeks later, I come and preach another gospel. Don't believe it. Even an angel come and speak, don't believe it. That's the assurance. Doctrinal stability. Hallelujah. See, doctrinal stability will not come by reading Psalms. Nathan, you understand? No, doctrinal stability will not come by reading Psalms. <clears throat> Praise God. It doesn't come by looking at the Facebook. One day you look at his face and the book will be open. <laughs> his face is book. Will be open to you. Doctrine and stability will not come by listening to songs that are so bad. Something that is very popular.
you know, I, I'm so sorry, you know, sometimes when I listen to young people's conversation, I feel like such a stupid idiot. I tell you why. Because in the conversation, the kind of movie starts, they talk about themes, they talk about... Man, I never seen them watching movie anytime. I'm talking to my own kids also. They know who is it. But I've been here 30, almost 30 years now. Does that, because I don't watch any of this stuff. They are into it. They know everything out there. I'm not saying you should, you know, you have general understanding about it. But I tell you, you will never have doctrinal stability from that. Read God's word. Spend time with God's word. Struggle with God's word. Listen to God's word. You know, some of the hymns that we sing here, they are full of doctrines. They're full of doctrines. Just simply, you know that uh, amazing grace? You know, there's a book. John MacArthur has written a book on that, on, on that song. Just one song. Read God's Word. Listen to things that promote understanding of God's Word. Involved in conversation that promote God's Word. You know, yesterday I was part of a group. I went to uh, Melbourne. They didn't expect me, but I showed up in the middle of the meeting. It was so nice to see the house. You know, I think they had maximum capacity crowd in that house. It's all they could handle. It was such a nice to see believers coming together, singing songs. You know, first time I was able to listen to, you know, Bobby's testimony. Nice testimony. Get to know him. I think it's, you know, it's an opportunity for us to open up. An opportunity to share from God's word, from a personal touch. It's very important. So I would encourage all of you, please go to small groups. Don't think you're you are big to go to a small group. We all need to go. Please get yourself. That's a nice place to get. And I really enjoy it. One of the brothers saying that they were sick. And they said all the small group people called them. I was so happy to hear that. That's what you can do. See, you can't have a 300 member church into your house. Not possible. That's precisely the reason we have this small group. So I would encourage you, please put away every false pride we have. And go get together, be part of it, learn scriptures together, encourage each other, understand each other, be united. God has great things to do in the city. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 15 here. Look at verse 15. Instead we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ. Like Christ. Who is the head of his body, the church? Snehatil, Satyam Samsarjunda, Christu Anna, Taliolam. See, one of the signs of a transforming believer is that deep attraction to the truth of God. They be a Satyam Lord Allah, Pangare Agraham. Amen. You know, there's a little song that I teach small children when I come to your house. I don't know if I sing that anymore. Children know the song. It's called Milk. You all know Pastor's Milk song? Yeah. Milk, milk, I would like to drink. So, Mr. Postman sent to me a copy of the Bible. Read the Bible to get stronger that I can't wait. Any longer. It's a song simply, you know, it's a small kid learns this. Postman, send me that Bible. I can't keep, you know, quiet anymore. I want to learn this. I want to read it. I want to grow. There's a deep attraction to the Word of God. You know, brothers and sisters, if you don't have a desire for this stuff, ask you. You do a self-diagnosis. I can tell you, you're not transforming. You are not transforming. Deva Vadanathoda, or Talperium, Agarshno, and Jeeva Tilila Engel, Ningle Waller in Nilanolo Satyo. You have a look of a Christian, you smell like a Christian. You come and sit in the church, you come show up on Sunday, every Sunday you show up. But you're not growing as a Christian. You're not transforming into his likeness. How in the Sadrasil is taken number one in the land. 
Hallelujah. In the Bible says here, first John chapter two, verse three. Amanda Kalpanagala Pramani Kinungil, Nam Amani Arni Kinu, Yana the Nanarinu, Amani Arni Kinu the Paragame, Amanda Kalpanagala Pramani Kadri Kane, Chela and Kalanagunu Satyam, Satya Kalanau Satya Venil Illa. Here is how we can be sure that we know God in the right way. Keep His commandments. If someone claims, I know Him, I know this well, I know Him well, but does not keep His commandments. He is obviously a liar. His life doesn't match his words. That's message translation. Somebody says, oh, I know him. But you never read his word. You never obey his word. A nice way they put it here. John puts in a nice way. He says here, you are nothing but a liar. Your life does not match your words. See, I don't have singing about you. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, let them be acceptable. Namada Hurdeum, Namada Kaigalum, Namada Kaligalum, Namada Hurdeum, Waila Wakulum, Tianum, Elam Devatu Vasadam Aitamaranum. Amen. Our steps and our words should match. God is calling us to maturity. This is called a developmental stability. Not just doctrinal stability. The Lord is calling us for a development of stability. Hallelujah. Bible says here, see, do we keep his commandments? You, you know, the most important thing is actually, it's not burdensome. First John 5, 3, 7, the Kalpanagal Pramani Kinna Allah, they were told us, I'm in the Kalpanagal Pada Mullavi Allah. They are not burdensome. They are not so hard. You can do it. But is there a desire in our hearts to do it? And I'll say this one, we'll close here. There's this devotional stability. In chapter 4, verse 16, we read. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I'll read it one more time. Each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. See, you are devoted to each other. You are devoted to the body of Christ. You do your part. He does his part. You help him do his part. If there is truth, please tell that in love. Speaking the truth in love. There's that devotional stability. Namade arpanatil samarpanatil namakuristerida namakavishamayadikya. Grow in the doctrine. Understand God's word. Praise the Lord. They are Vadanam Namla Manasilakwa and Elpichodaka. Namada Vika said, Lord, I want to grow. I want to be developed in every area of my life. I want to be that good citizen, good father, good son, good daughter, good daughter in law, son in law, a good member of the church. I want to be a good pastor, good father. Every area I want to develop. Amen. I want, to, I want to grow in every area, Lord. I also want to be committed, devoted to the body of Christ. The U.S. of order, each part do its work. Amen. Listen here, this is very important as a church. I want to say this to you. You should pray for each other. You should encourage each other. You know, part of the way you are talking about it. You never said a good word. Only one thing you opened your mouth and said, how terrible that was. So all these years, all these days, they come, practice, they, you know, say a good word. Somebody who does something good, say a good word. Encourage somebody. Ningalu mukhandaram aradhana karalu ningini irikiru. Whatever you do, please do so that the other person will be encouraged. 
So they can also do their part, you do your part. So the whole body is built up together and we will develop into a place where God dwells. Let's close our eyes.